I have with me Robert Farrow, the Executive Director of the Small Business Analysts Society of Canada. He is a former tax auditor with the Canada Revenue Agency and Senior Manager in Tax at two of Canada's largest accounting firms between 2005 and 2012. In 2020, he founded the Small Business Analyst Society of Canada. I have to ask you, what motivated you to leave the security and higher wages of a large firm to go out on your own? Our largest accounting and management consulting firms all use something they call leverage. Leverage means that wage rates were marked up by a factor of 8 to 10 times. In my case, as a senior manager in a specialty tax group, my billing rate was $575 per hour in 2010. My utilization rate was expected to be at 90%. If you multiply out my billing rate, you're looking at over $1 million per year in billings, just for me. To our clients, it seemed like we were very highly paid because they had to pay our firm a hell of a lot in fees, but my hourly wage worked out to just $57 an hour if you included bonuses. So you're saying that it was the low wages that caused you to leave? Not really. The salary was adequate for my needs. The professional development and the coaching culture were actually pretty good, and I enjoyed working with junior staff. So if you enjoyed working with junior staff, why did you leave? At the senior level, there was a lot of professional jealousy and competitive behaviors that I found very hard to take. One senior manager I worked with extensively was particularly difficult. Eventually, I was promoted to her level, perhaps in recognition of her toxic personality. She had already driven out one of her colleagues. After he left, his replacement was better able to protect himself. But then he began looking for allies to oust the partner. By then, I'd had enough. Eventually, I found myself working for a somewhat smaller firm. But I soon found that competition was just as intense, but without the benefit of decent professional development opportunities and a good coaching culture. So, at 60, I retired to run my own practice. After running your own practice for seven or eight years, what motivated you to start the Small Business Analyst Society of Canada in 2020? I was getting ready to retire and realized my practice couldn't really be sold. Some 20 years earlier, I'd sold a practice in Victoria, B.C. for about 90 cents per dollar of revenue. At the time, my revenue was about $120,000 per year, but 20 years later, there was really no market for small firms. What, in your view, caused this change? I could get technical here, but it would be kind of like inside baseball and incomprehensible to listeners. In my view, the newly merged professional body for Canada's professional accountants clearly served the interests of Canada's 10 largest public accounting firms. They actually worked against the interests of the 17,000 or so firms that serve the tax compliance needs of more than 85% of Canada's small businesses. I recall speaking to one CPA who was trying to get her daughter to follow in her footsteps. Under the new competency requirements introduced by CPA Canada, a partner at a big four firm in British Columbia who served on the Experience Committee challenged the adequacy of the daughter's experience. Apparently, in his view, the years worked at her mother's firm serving the needs of their small business clients wasn't good enough to meet the needs of a CPA to adequately serve the needs of those same clients. The implications are obvious. Our largest 10 firms accounted for about 61% of the revenue of the 17,000 or so offices of public accountants in 2021. They have the resources to sit on the committees that control the profession. Is it fair to say that larger firms can provide more varied experience than a small firm? That may be true, but most of our smallest businesses don't need financial statement audits to list on a public stock exchange. And they probably don't need help with enterprise resource planning systems either. In the healthcare field, we don't expect our family doctor to perform heart transplants or sex change operations. But we still need plenty of skilled family medicine practitioners. Specialist work is invariably referred to specialists in accounting and in every other skilled occupation. So is the business analyst technician program offered by SBA Canada designed to prepare the next generation of public accountants serving small businesses in Canada, kind of like family doctors for small businesses? Our goals are more modest than that. We first need accounting technicians to assist the 78% of public accounting practitioners with only one or two partners to prepare working paper files for their small business clients. 
On top of that, these technicians will need education and experience in the taxation of small businesses, including both incorporated and unincorporated businesses. The professional part of being an accounting professional serving small business clients revolves around taxation. That requires a combination of both education and experience. But you have to layer that on top of a solid understanding of what I call the accounting algorithm. That's kind of like skating should be for professional hockey players.